Greetings everyone. This is an earthquake watch for March 14 through to March 19. A devastating 8.9 earthquake struck off the east coast of Honshu, Japan during March the 11th. And this will be a day remembered by all of us for a lot of reasons. And with heartfelt sympathy, we send love and prayers to all people concerned in the area of Japan. This earthquake watch is a significant one. I do believe there is a strong likelihood of some very large earthquakes headed our way, possibly two over 7.5 in magnitude. I'm showing a split screen with Solar Monitor and Google Earth, and I'm showing the country of Japan and showing a symmetry on the solar corona. Now, whenever we do get a cross coronal hole on the solar corona, I associate this with uh, an Asian profile or an Asian event. It does appear that we do have a similar sort of pattern showing on a solar corona right now. And that could put this region in play for another large earthquake, unfortunately. There is another area that could also be in play. And that could be the area of the San Andreas Fault as it's showing the opposite effect. So this area would also be of a concern during this watch. The latest solar wind telemetry from ACE is showing a significant rise in solar winds over the last 12 hours. Levels have increased from 400 kilometers a second up to 598 kilometers a second not too long ago. Now we need to closely monitor these solar winds. Once these levels subside and get to around 300 to 350 kilometers a second, we may be susceptible to a very large earthquake. The KP index is showing a significant amount of activity and not only did we receive a G1 class geomagnetic storm early March 11, but this has been followed up by a G2 category class geomagnetic storm later on that day. So this is two geomagnetic storms within a 24 hour period and this is fairly significant. It is highly likely that within three and a half to four and a half days of these geomagnetic storms we could be receiving one or two very large earthquakes, possibly 7.5 in magnitude based on this telemetry alone. Looking at the Solon.info website and we've got an animated coronal hole map that I like to use in my earthquake forecast. Now this gives us a really good look at the coronal holes and we're focusing in on the southern hemisphere and this is a fairly significant coronal hole although there is not a lot of movement in the last few days. There is a significant area just above and below that we'll have a close look at with the moving imagery. Looking at the Solar IMG website and they've got a fantastic website that gives you plenty of options and everything you need for this form of research and we're looking at the vertical ionospheric delay and this is a fairly good tool and instrument in assisting earthquake forecasting. I'm going to be using Solar Monitor with the 174 Angstrom to determine some coronal holes and then map them with Google Earth to determine possible areas that may be at risk for these large earthquakes. I'm targeting a region 29 to 33 degrees north latitude. My main area of concern for this watch is a region of Baja California extending up the San Andreas Fault through Los Angeles. This will be my number one area of concern during this watch. My second area of concern will be the Ryukyu Islands, Japan. My third area of concern would be southern Iran. My next two regions are of a very small probability and they are the regions of western and eastern Sichuan, China, the northern mid-Atlantic ridge and the small possibility of a volcanic activation in the Canary Islands and that's the La Palma volcano. Looking at the 193 Angstrom with the SDO we get to see a significant coronal hole in the southern hemisphere. Now the most dangerous regions of this coronal hole are 40 to 44 degrees south latitude and that would put regions of Wellington and Christchurch at risk for a significant earthquake March 13 or 14. Now with solar winds at fairly high levels it would be unlikely that an event will occur. So if we do get a significant decrease in solar winds during this time frame, this area will be in play. I'm looking at the southern hemisphere now and I do feel that there are a few coronal holes that may be of interest and it could be in play during this watch. The first area is approximately 5 to 9 degrees south latitude. The areas best fit and matched for the southern hemisphere would be the Banda Sea, the Flora Sea and Kepaluan Babar, Indonesia. I have been assisted with one of Australia's finest astrologers in producing a few of these charts that we're looking right now. I will leave the link in the description box for anyone interested in finding out more information. What we're getting to look at is some significant dates during March. 
there's been a lot of talk about March 15 and here is a chart involving this day. We get to see a significant amount of squares and oppositions and this represents perhaps a very dangerous day during this watch and it needs to be paid close attention to. Okay we're looking at the most important date of this watch and that's March 19. This is a date that's been labelled the supermoon date. Now this is the lunar perigee where the moon is at its closest point and a fairly significant date for a lot of reasons. Um, the moon is lining up to square the galactic centre and north node moon while opposing the sun prior to the full moon. So again extremely powerful day. We also have Neptune in opposition to the Midhaven and Sun and Uranus squaring the galactic core and the north node moon. There is a possibility that during this watch celestially speaking we are moving into a period of fairly significant times and there could be a possibility of some very large earthquakes. So it would be wise if people were to pay attention more to their environment and there is a phenomenon called earthquake lights this is associated with the rubbing of tectonic plates in the Earth's crystals deep within the ground. And we often get a light phenomenon in the skies. A lot of people associate this with some form of instrument of use. But basically we're given a heads up of events prior to them happening. And that's part of what all this earthquake forecasting is all about, is to give people a chance to prepare for possible events. So if people were to spend a little bit more time looking at their environment, uh, looking for these earthquake light phenomenon, it will assist, I feel. There is an excellent channel that has information on this, and that's Believers Underground, so I will leave the link in my video for anyone who's interested. Okay, that's my earthquake watch for today, March 12, 2011. Thanks for watching.